Welcome to Biology Made Easy. Today we discuss what makes a tree live and grow for thousands of years. Welcome. Trees like the full cone pines from 5,000 years. Other like these also grow huge and tall like the Haperon. The world's tallest tree is about 380 feet in height and huge. The question is, what makes a tree grow long? For years, answer it's genes and architecture. The genes are the genetic makeup. The architecture is the body design and materials. All vascular plants have the same basic architecture as the body plan and materials of continuously dividing cells at the root tip and at the shoot tip. These are the epical meristem. They produce cells to make sure the plant is growing in height and also tissues to build the whole plant. Then there is an outer protective covering and then there's some living tissue of all vascular plants of which the thousands of years plants also have so whether the plant is an ephemeral which lives only a few weeks like desert plants whether it's an annual lives for one year or biennial like this one that lives for two years or perennial like this shrub or these trees, or this one that lasts for thousands of years, they all have the basic plan. But let's look at the plan architecture of this plant that lives for thousands of years. So here is the architecture of a tree like this one that lives for thousands of years. There are three important things. There should be a living tissue that continuously conducts nutrients from the root tip to the shoot tip. Once there's a living tissue to conduct water and mineral salts from the root tip to the shoot tip and also food substances from the leaves through the plant, that is one condition by which this plant will live for years. Another condition is these epical meristems are the tips of the root and at the shoot. If they are there, to continue producing new cells to replace old cells and also to increase gift, then the tree will continue year after year. Other conditions that must be met are the following. There should be a protective structure that protects the tree, that is the cork. It protects the inner tissues from losing too much water by evaporation and also protects the inner tissues from pathogens. So, protective covering. Then there should be an inner pillar that supports the weight and the height of the tree. The inner pillar is the hard wood. The hard wood is a dead, tough structure. Then beside the hard wood, there's also the sap wood, which is also tough, but still have living tissues to do conduction of water, mineral salts, and food, rapid conduction up and down the plant. These are the three major things that should, okay? But beside that, there should be root adaptation to support and hold the tree in place. So roots must be tough, buttress roots that hold the tree. So these are extensive roots system to hold the tree in place. Strong buttress roots and extensive rooting system to keep the tree in place. The rooting system is also extensive in the soil and it has fungi associated with the root. That association is called mycorrhiza, where fungi is intertwined with the roots to increase the surface area for absorption of water and mineral salts. Besides the root adaptation, there should also be leaf adaptation. There should be leaves to photosynthesize and the leaves usually shed off to reduce water loss. The leaves are also thick, narrow leaves prevent excessive loss. Provided, it should also be said about the fact that part of the tree can be dead, like we 
have holes in here. Part of the tree can be dead, but other there is living tissue in some parts of the tree. So once there's living tissue, continuous living tissue like this, in a part of a tree, some branches will be dead, but other branches will live. And the life of the whole tree is prolonged. So as this bristle cone can be seen, part of the tree is dead. But there are parts that are vigorously living because the living tissue is still in there. Well, like this crystal cone pine, you could see that much of what we are seeing is wood, but there are parts of it still living with these leaves. So it means that what much of what is exposed is the wood, the heartwood that is dead, but there will be parts of it that have living tissue and those parts will live. These are tiny leaves. So there will be living tissue in parts of it. There will be living tissue in part of it. And once part of it are living, the whole tree continues to live. There are also adaptations like the plants. Most of the plants are in sheltered areas on the top of a hill or in valley. Like we see this heparon. All these trees that surround this big heparon serve as wind bricks to reduce the speed of wind against this one. There are clonal trees like this one, Pandu in Utah, that also live for thousands of years. The colony of this one called Pandu has lived for 900,000 years and the colony covers about 106 acres of land with 48,000 trees. But individual trees have been estimated to live for 130 years. Now, what makes this colony go on from year to year? Well, it's been found that roots grow new trees and so increase the colony. Roots normally do not produce plants, but on stems can produce new shoots or plants, like these herbaceous plants here. So this plant has an underground stem called rhizome, and these are the roots. They don't have buds, but the stem has a bud. There is a bud on part of the stem, and this bud can produce a new plant. The roots that produced these trees in the clonal trees, here's a drawing that I've made, those roots bear adventitious buds. So this is an adventitious bud, this is a root. Adventitious bud is a bud that grows out of place. Anything adventitious grows out of place. There can be an adventitious bud on a root. There can also be adventitious bud on a shoot. And this adventitious bud is what will produce a new tree. So that is what happens in the clonal trees that have lived for years. Adventitious buds will produce another tree. And another adventitious bud, another tree. Then there is old tigo in Sweden. It's also a tree that has lived for so long. The tree is estimated to have lived for almost 10,000 years because of roots examinations. Well, it's been examined and found out that this tree will fall and another tree will grow in its place. So the tree has lived above about a thousand, but the root examination shows that it's been around for 10,000 years. That means that if this is old tigo and these are the root systems in the soil, there must be adventitious buds somewhere that if this tree falls off, it will produce another tree to replace it. So, want to quickly summarize why some trees can live for a thousand years? Well, we said genes, you need to have a gene to live long, but then the architecture also, and this is the architecture of trees that live on, go living on year after year. They have this wooden structure, secondary growth architecture. It's this is the outermost covering of cork, dead, tissue to protect the plant. So the summary, we have seen that beside genes that determine that a tree should live for long, the architecture also is very, very important. 
and the architecture of trees that go on living for years is this. It should have an outer covering of cork, dead tissue to protect the plant from pests and pathogens and losing too much water. It should have an inner tissue that makes sure that there's nutrients that be conducted through the plant and also living tissue that makes the plant alive. There should be a central pillar of strong heartwood to hold the whole structure in place. And then also wood that have living tissue to still do conduction of water, mineral, salts, and food. Here is the composition of the living tissue. It includes cock cambium, secondary cortex, primary cortex, secondary phloem, primary phloem, and vascular cambium. This arrangement is all about secondary growth that we will talk about in our next lesson. So here is the TS, transverse section of um, woody plants structure that can go on for years. Here is the cork, here is the living tissue, and here is wood. Good. The living tissue, as we can see here, is white in color. And then we have the cambium in here, and then the wood. Here we can see the cork clearly. This is tree that has been cut for a long time. We can see the wood. The central bit will be hard wood and the sub wood will cover around this area a bit whitish now this area is the living tissue which because this was cut for a long time it looks quite dark so this is the structure of trees that go on living for years going through secondary growth this brings us to the end of our lesson Thank you very much and goodbye.